What's up YouTube? This is Daniel Carter at Afro Herb Keeper. Today <laughs> it's about 7.45 in the morning. This is a lot earlier than I normally get up and I am running on three and a half hours of sleep. But you know what? It's worth it because I was up that late cleaning and sanitizing cages, putting labels on them, and uh, writing up some educational pamphlets for the reptile show that I'm doing today. I am about to load up my car with uh, 21, a whopping 21 of my reptiles and amphibians. And we are driving them out to Doe Skin Ranch uh, at the incredible Balcones Canyonlands National Wildlife Preserve, which is, uh, you know, just about a 30, 35 minute drive from my house. This usually ends up being my favorite gig all year, and uh, I didn't want to disappoint. I'm glad they invited me back again. So what we're going to do right now is pack up 21 of my reptiles and amphibians, drive them out to the Canyonlands, and uh, <laughs> set up our table. I will be sure to document this whole process so you guys can follow along. So without any further ado, let's get started. The planet we live on is infested with life. Creeping, crawling, slithering life. Once upon a time, everything we did revolved around the natural world. But now, there are billions of us, and we as a species have never strayed further from our roots. Even so, some of us continue to slip through the cracks. I'm not scared of any animal, no matter the number of teeth, claws, or legs. My only directive is to reconnect you with the wild, to defend the creatures that need it most, and to do my part to preserve the biodiversity of our remarkable world. My name is Daniel Carter, and you're watching Afro Herb Keeper. So to this one, I am bringing a total of six native Texas turtles. Four amphibians, both from Texas and Mexico. Same with uh, our lizards, we got four from both places. And uh, a whopping seven snakes, both venomous and non-venomous. I think our turtles are gonna be the most reasonable to load up, so let's get started with them. First up, we have my box turtles. Uh, I have eight box turtles at this point. We are gonna be picking out the two boldest adults from my uh, living room grow tent. The lights are still off for the day, but uh, as you can hopefully see, it's really quite a jungle in here. Um, down here on the forest floor, Here's one of my adult females. This is a three-toed box turtle. As is this. Uh, here we go. So this is my, so this guy is the boldest of the group. This is Darth Maul, the three-toed box turtle. He looks like he could use a bit of a rinse to look his best, but I'm gonna put him in his allotted box. And as usual in the very back corner, we have my adult male eastern box turtle. You can see a few of the morphological differences in these guys. This one is from Kentucky. I think he was collected 14 or 15 years ago. I'm gonna give these guys a quick rinse in the sink and then keep moving. And just like that, you can see how their colors just pop right out. As soon as you get them wet. All right, so three toed and eastern box turtles. Next up is my common snapping turtle. This guy is a big brute. Thankfully, he just barely fits in here. And he will have a lid. Don't want any kids losing their fingers. Now, the little guys, my Texas map and razorback musk turtles. So here is Hash Brown, the Texas map turtle. You can see why they are so named because of this beautiful pattern on their back. Looks like the uh, surface of a topographical map. And my Razorback musk turtle. This guy is like a little mini snapper. You can see exactly what gives him the namesake of Razorback. And finally, last up is my Texas River Cooter. This guy is a pretty new addition to my group of animals. He was in need of a home because his owner is now in Kuwait on a military deployment. So in here he goes. This is the most common turtle in my area, I think alongside red-eared sliders. 
So he will be a great educational animal for today. And that is all of our turtles. Now for lizards, I may have to lure a couple of these guys out of hiding. Firstly, we have this greater earless lizard. This is a really personable native species, commonly found in the area that we're going to. They have this super cool zebra tail that they will actually wag in the air like a dog, and that is meant to distract their predators so that they could drop their tail and flee if need be. These next ones are gonna need a bribe, so we are grabbing some cockroaches. No shortage. These are good sized. All right, hanging out in here, one of my favorite lizards in the world, the Texas alligator lizard. Uh, she is very food oriented, so as soon as she sees this, she should be coming right up to the front. Gently encouraging her to leave the safety of her home. Want it? Good job. We have to make sure we get her prehensile tail too. Mission success. Now we just have to get her in here. She don't want it. There she goes. And uh, this program is running from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. So uh, they won't be out there for all that long. Okay, thankfully I see this guy up at the top. Uh, these are my Abronia mixteca, uh, mixtecan arboreal alligator lizards. And I see the male poking his face out of this cork tube up here. We're gonna see if we can get him to come all the way out to be grabbed. He is also very food driven, thankfully. What a beautiful lizard he is, man. Okay, we gotta get you out of here. I know, I know, I'm sorry. Isn't he a little dragon if you ever saw one? Awesome, okay, he's going in this little one. Uh, this is not a Texan lizard, but they are native to uh, the cloud forests of southern Mexico, which are actually a fairly similar habitat to uh, the Texas Hill Country. And now finally, last but not least, we have my venomous Mexican beaded lizard. Uh, if you've heard of the Gila monster, this is his south of the border cousin. Now he actually gets much bigger than this. He's going to get about three feet long, so like tegu sized. Uh, but seeing as he is venomous, uh, I've got these welding gloves on. He's gonna go into his carrier and for the safety of the general public, he's not coming back out. What a fun little guy he is though. Um, I say fun, and this lizard spends 80% of its time resting, but, you know. Here we are. So here's all four of our incredible Texican lizards. Uh, the Abronia is a more heat-sensitive species, so before we go, I'm gonna give him a good misting with this to try and make sure he stays cool. And just for the sake of it, I sprayed everybody else down too. Now, amphibians. These are going to get the same misting down that the lizards did because uh, multiple of these are relatively heat sensitive species. We don't want them getting too warm. So I have this tiny, tiny froglet in here. As it says on the cup, he just finished turning into a frog. Uh, not two days ago. Tiny, tiny baby Rio Grande leopard frog. I'm gonna have to uh, use both hands. Now we are grabbing a salamander from all three of my tubs. Have to uh, lure this guy out of hiding. This is my largest barred tiger salamander. <laughs> and his feeding response is pretty great. My buddy, so we gotta clean this guy off. 
Now he's nice and wet and slippery, and into his cup he goes. I love these things. They have the best expressions. So it's important, especially with the amphibians, to wash your hands between handling. And here are my incredible Ishtmira Belli Bell's False Brook Salamanders. We're going to take this one because he's easiest to grab. This is a really remarkable species of salamander endemic to Mexico. They can reach 14 inches in length as adults and uh, it's theorized that they can live upwards of 80 years. So we have my Bell's False Brook Salamander and my Barred Tiger Salamander. Now we're gonna get one of my Western Slimy Salamanders. These guys are a lot harder to reach. I did not design their enclosure with uh, taking them out very often in mind. Here we go, I see a couple peeking out from under here. There he is. Oh, I gotta get them. <laughs> okay, thankfully, I found a few of them in the back and was able to grab one without squishing anybody. All right, here we have all my amazing amphibians. Um, I'm gonna tape the lids onto these just for the animal's sake. Uh, and then, it's time to get the snakes. All right, non-venomous first. Almost all of the snakes I'm bringing are native species. The first is an eastern hognose who I have been caring for. If you follow me on my Instagram, you'll have met this one. Um, this girl was found by a homeowner and uh, they pinned her with a shovel, ended up breaking a few of her ribs, and actually punctured the outer casing of her lung. So she's been on a regimen of Fortaz antibiotics and she is getting better. Uh, she is going to be an educational snake for today. And this is a big eastern hog nose. This is as large as they get. God, I love them. Super cool snakes. Next is the first snake I ever owned. Her name is Mort. She is an eastern blackneck garter snake, a hidden gem of central Texas. She's not going to be about this. She tried to bite me. Come on, girl. This snake is, I think, 10 or 11 years old at this point. She does not want to be any part of this, but the people need to know. The people need to know that you exist. The people need to know that you exist and that you are harmless. We're going to try and angle her in there. There we go. Good job. Eastern Black Knight Garter Snake. Beautiful. I love her. Here we have one of my newest snakes, a beautiful Trans-Pecos Rat Snake. This girl has a great temperament, so she's just going to go straight in here. Or not. Come on. Now it's time to move on to the venomous ones. This is Bullseye, the Western Diamondback Rattlesnake. He's getting nice and big. I also have uh, Morph, the uh, Albino, Protolus Aatrox in here. Uh, but she is not coming with, and she's constantly up here anyways. So I'm just gonna get him. Turning off the camera for this because I don't have a camera person and I value my life. I don't think I've even shown him on the channel yet, but this guy is almost two feet long. Good for you, dude. He was much smaller when I uh, got him. Next up is my Southern Copperhead. Another one of my newer snakes. Really stinking gorgeous snake, this one. Good way to identify uh, most Copperheads, especially Southerns, are these Hershey's Kisses on their sides. Okay, last but not least, we got my Western Cottonmouth. Smokey, there he is. Let's see if I can pull him out through this tiny gap. Alrighty, here's all three of our pit vipers, and uh, now I'm late. It's time to go. One final thing to grab, that is my Texas Coral Snake. And there you have it. This is uh, six snakes, six turtles, four lizards, and Riding shotgun, four amphibians. And now, just a little bit late, we are finally on the road to the Balconius Canyonlands National Wildlife Refuge. I'm gonna be trying my best to drive gently this trip, especially for the turtle tubs full of water in the back seat.
right, so we have finally arrived at Doe Skin Ranch. We are heading down to uh, my spot down there, as you can see. I'm trying to be gentle on this dirt road for my turtles, but uh, you know, you win some, you lose some. Here we are. So now, I get to back up to this and set up. So this is from the, this is an Abronia mixteca, mixtecan arboreal alligator lizard. Um, this is from so they the- live in trees. Yeah, this is from the cloud forests of uh, southern Mexico. Oh, wow. Um, wow. So, you know how it, how it got this last winter when it was super cold and wet and foggy? Uh-huh. Um, and all the, you might have noticed all the Tillandsias were really thriving in that. Um, that's essentially their habitat. It's like that year round in southern Mexico. Um, wow. These are from specifically uh, Guerrero and Oaxaca. Uh -huh. um, and they are named after the Mixtec people uh, who in, used to inhabit the region. This is my male. I have a pair of them. Oh. And That's a lot of personality. Yes, he's, he's blue and the female is bright green. And where do the salamanders live? Um, so. Uh, this one is from Tarzan, Texas. Um, it's it's <laughs> said that they can live here, or it's said that their range includes here, but I don't think they've ever been found. But here. Tarzan's dry. Right. Is yeah. Yeah. Water so, source? so barred tiger salamanders are unique. They're from the desert. Um, in West Texas and Arizona and the Sonoran Desert and all, they, it's dry for most of the year, and then there's a really intense rainy season for a few weeks, and so they stay burrowed underground. Uh, for most of the year and then when it rains they all come up on mass and feed and breed and do all their salamandery things uh, until uh, the water runs dry again and then they go back to hmm. the burrow and spend the rest of their year down there. Do they do they go into like a hibernation? Yeah, or yeah like, like a, a, I don't know if you would call it a brumation or an esteviation or what. But And how many babies they have? They like most amphibians, they have like a clutch of eggs. Um, so I think they have hundred dozens to hundreds, dozens to maybe a hundred at and a time. And they don't, I don't all know. make it. No, they don't all make it. Some of them actually cannibalize each other. Um, some of them might get picked off by other species of amphibians. Some of them might get picked off by fish birds. or turtles or birds. Yeah, uh, this one is native. This is the western slimy salamander, uh, Plethodon albagula. This is the only terrestrial salamander that we have here. And that's the one with the spots on his on the side of his tail. Uh, he's got doesn't have oh, spots on the underside yeah. of his tail. He's got um, he's got little white speckles oh. all along his body. And this is actually a large female. And are they friendly? I mean, yeah, they don't do anything. They're just they're just uh, they just hang out. I, I have a friend who <laughs> likes to call them gummy lizards. Oh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Do you care if we take pictures of the snakes? No, that uh, pictures are welcome. Oh, no good. flash because we already have the outdoor lighting. We have lizards, we have amphibians, we have snakes, and we have a bunch of turtles over there too. Ooh. I know that's why I'm here because I don't want to get, yeah. I don't want my dog to get bit or me. This is Daniel Carter right here. He's just so. nice to be yeah. Oh, they're all good snakes. snakes. Yeah, they're all good snakes. Yeah, you're right. They're all good they're they're some all of them can kill you and some can't. Stop for a water break. Satin ant. You want to ask him what, what those numbers are for? Yeah. Someone has fur and big eyes. We love it. But if it doesn't have fur and has small eyes, <laughs> Well, I got her on a house call, so I relocate snakes for people. Uh -huh. um, so the person who owned the property actually had her pinned down with a shovel. And uh, the shovel was really sharp, and they accidentally managed, they didn't mean to hurt her, but they accidentally managed to puncture the outer casing of her lung, um, which is no bueno. So uh, I took her to a reptile vet, and uh, she was prescribed antibiotic injections. Uh, the lump is actually from a couple broken ribs as well. Um, and so... Look at her tongue, isn't that? Mm -hmm. And so she's on a, an antibiotic regimen, and that white stuff you can see on her back is called silver sulfadiazine, which is a topical antibiotic cream. Um, and, and her eyes are blue because? Her eyes are blue because she's about to shed her skin. 
So snakes need to shed their skin to get bigger um, because it doesn't grow with them. Um, new layers grow underneath and they have to shed the old layer so that the new one can come in. And so snakes don't have eyelids like we do. They instead have scales called eye caps. Um, and so the eye caps come off with the rest of the skin when they shed. Because she's got the layer of shed on top that needs to come off and the fresh skin underneath, uh, she has two layers of scales over her eyes right now and that makes them milky and it means that she's partially blind. But once she sheds her skin, those eyes are going to clear back up and she'll be able to see. Butterworks. And you can see she's, she's, not, she's not scary or anything. She's not trying to bite me. She's just trying to get away. Um, you can think of a snake as just a lizard without legs because snakes and lizards, they're both squamates. They're in the same group of animals. Um, they evolved from the same uh, origins, the same uh, ancestors. Um, so everything that a lizard... You know, you look at a lizard and you can kind of tell something's going on in its head. It's a little harder to do that with a snake, but uh, all the mental capacity that a lizard has, a snake also has. Like the desert. She probably loves where it's really deserty and sandy. What? Well, it might be a little hot. Yeah, straight up the hill, I thought. Nope. So we've gotten about halfway through the program, and uh, we ended up putting a tarp up to shade the critters because it's getting quite hot. It's uh. 88 degrees out here right now, so the more heat-sensitive species like the salamanders and the abronia, they're staying nice and cool. And they've been given cool water as well. So these are salamanders. Do you know what a salamander is? What? A salamander, it's like if you took a lizard and crossed it with a frog. It's an amphibian, not a reptile. So just like a frog, like this guy, it, they breathe through their skin. They have a semi-permeable membrane, which just means that they, uh, they take in oxygen and water through their skin instead of their mouths. Yeah, this guy over here is called a western slimy salamander, um, Plethodon albagula, and uh, this is the only native terrestrial salamander species. So you could go out and find one of these around here if you're lucky. Um, the best time of year to look for them is when it's cool and wet, like spring and fall. Um, they Where live, would you find them? They live in leaf litter, under rotting logs and rocks, um, usually in dense forests, in the shade of a cliff or a hill. Um, so somewhere where it's going to be shady consistently all year round because they can't take the heat. Look how big that guy is. This guy Look at that. is a barred tiger salamander and he is from Tarzan, Texas, which is in West Texas. Wow. Uh, this is a species that gets 12 inches long. I can actually open this one up. Look at him! If you look at their toes, they're not wet. I really like him. Oh, yes. He's not... <laughs> <laughs> he, he, they have a great feeding response. So oh they bite gosh. anything that moves. Oh my gosh. If he thinks it's food, then, then they'll go for it. They have an unparalleled feeding response among salamanders. Wow. Um, but this is a species that lives in West Texas where it's really hot and dry. You wouldn't expect a salamander to live in the desert, up? right? Yeah. Um, so, what does it eat? Oh, they eat anything. They eat insects, they eat small rodents, uh, small amphibians. Um, fish, whatever they can catch, whatever wanders by them. And you can see they have a great lunging ability. Mm -hmm. um, so, so for most of the year they stay underground because it's hot and dry and then they have a really intense rainy season. Um, it gets really rainy for just a few weeks out of the year and uh, during those three weeks then they all come out of the ground at once and uh, they eat, they mate, they do all their salamandery things, and uh, then when time runs out and the water dries back up, they go underground for the rest of the year. Daniel was saying, this one's eyes are milky. She was one that he rescued because she'd been injured by a homeowner. And Um, so I had a, uh, I had a box turtle when I was three. So this is a Texas alligator lizard. You can find these guys around here. They are native to central Texas. Uh, you wouldn't know it because they, they never show themselves. They're super secretive like a chameleon. Um, they have the same strategies. They hunt super slow, they move super slow, and they spend all their time in rock crevices or in bushes. 
uh, waiting for their prey to come by. You can see super strong prehensile tail. Um, they are semi-arboreal, so they can climb all these trees, uh, they can get way up high, it gives them a lot of access to uh, different places to hunt and to forage. So native species, really cool, you'd never know it because you never see them. Uh, this is his cousin from southern Mexico. These are from the cloud forests of Guerrero and Oaxaca, Mexico. And this is the Mixtecan arboreal alligator lizard. This is a male. I have a pair. This guy is super cool. It's like a tiny dragon, right? You can touch him really gently with one finger if you want. He's not sure about this. This is his first program, but uh -huh. he's staying nice and cool, so. Yeah. These are my favorites. They're super cool. Yeah. They just have perfect little dragon heads. And they have really cool hunting behavior too. They can uh, yeah. support themselves with their hind legs. They'll wrap their, I've seen him, um, if I hold a bug out really far, uh, he will wrap his tail around something for support. He'll stand on his hind legs and he will just, he'll just support himself like that and reach out as far as he can go and then nabs it. They're really cool stealth hunters. That's called a greater earless lizard. I'm not taking him out because he's super flighty and tiny. Yes, so you can get him back. Yeah, so the greater earless lizard is also native to this area. You could find them on this property. Um, pretty common. I think I actually passed one on the way here. This is a female. Um, they're just a little tiny lizard, but they're pretty cool because they have um, they have this interesting zebra pattern on the underside of their tail. Can you see that? Um, so they will actually, when confronted with a predator or when they are uh, trying to signal to other lizards, um, yeah. they'll wave that tail around in the air like a dog wagging its tail. And, and the bright zebra stripes, they're noticeable. Why does that one have red spots on it? So, that is just how the species is. Um, here's another one. This is called the Bell's False Brook Salamander. It's Shmira belli. These are from Mexico, um, from the same place as this guy, actually. And this is a cool species of salamander because they have a projectile tongue that they can shoot out like a chameleon. Um, so they nab their prey like that. They can also grow up to 14 inches long, which is pretty big, and they can live over 80 years, which is really long, especially for an animal this small. This is my oldest snake. I've had her for 11 or 12 years, and oh she's, my gosh. She, she, wants to, she knows the drill. She just wants to go back home. Um, so her name is Mort. She is an eastern blackneck garter snake, and this is one of our uh, prettiest non-venomous native snakes. Yeah. This is as big as they come. She's, she's like 11 or 12 years old. All right, so we have reached the conclusion of our event. Um, it's, it's like, what, 1.30 now? It was a little bit yep, past, a little past my allotted time slot. Uh, we got a good crowd. I think uh, at least like four dozen, sixty, at least sixty people. Uh, so I'm here with uh, Cindy Harding Woodhull, who happened to be one of my elementary school teachers and is now a Texas Master Naturalist working out here at the Balcones Canyonlands, and Steve Brockway, Turtle Guy. Turtle guy. <laughs> um, uh, and, and we've got all the critters uh, over here. One more time, one more time for the end of the video. We have my Eastern box turtle, my three-toed box turtle, Texas river cooter, common snapping turtle, razorback musk turtle, Texas map turtle, Western diamondback rattlesnake, Southern copperhead, Western cottonmouth. We've got a uh, Texas coral snake over here, eastern hognose, transpecos rat snake, eastern blackneck garter snake, our barred tiger salamander, Bell's false brook salamander, western slimy salamander, and our little leopard frog who is looking nice and steamy in there, greater earless lizard, Mexican beaded lizard, Texas alligator lizard, and our Mixtecan arboreal alligator lizard. So if you enjoyed this video, this sneak peek into what goes into educating the general public about the reptiles and amphibians of Texas and Mexico, be sure to leave a like. Uh, if you have any questions, drop them in the comment section if you enjoyed. If you're new to my channel and you like this kind of content, please feel free to hit the subscribe button. And if you're already subscribed and you want to get notified whenever I upload a new video, please feel free to hit the little bell icon. I'd appreciate it. Thanks you all very much for watching and 
We'll see you next time.